Hey, what's up guys? I'm super excited to be unboxing this new TP-Link Deco BE85 Wi-Fi 7 mesh system. This thing's supposed to be crazy fast. This is my first Wi-Fi 7 device that I'm testing. I also have the OnePlus 11 5G, which is the only, currently the only Wi-Fi 7 device out there. I will test with my Wi-Fi 6C devices as well, the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Pixel 7 Pro, just to get some comparison speeds, but this thing's supposed to be crazy fast. It has this new multi-link operation. So it has the same 2.45 GHz and the 6 GHz band that Wi-Fi 6C has, except it's much faster, can support much faster speeds, lower latency, everything's supposed to be crazy fast and it new, now has the 320 megahertz bandwidth versus the 160 megahertz which was already pretty fast. Now the thing that kind of blew my mind was that when you do a wired backhaul, I guess it uses wireless and wired backhaul to give you even better speed so this thing is just insane. I honestly can't wait till I test this thing out. And we could see we have two 10 gig ports on it, two two and a half gig ports. We even have an SFP that is, it's a shared port between the 10 gig RJ45, which is the Ethernet cable, and the SFP Plus, which is the fiber optic cable. We also have a USB 3.0. And there's a lot more here, but let's just get to the unboxing. So this thing is massive, and we could see the ports right here. We have the WPS. We have two 2.5 gig ports, two 10 gig ports. They didn't even bother putting gigabit ports on this because this is too fast for that. And these are a combo port. So it has the SFP, which is basically the fiber optic. Now these are less common in home units, more common in business units, but uh, this is ethernet obviously, RJ45. And we have USB 3.0, power, good to go there. And it looks like they put the seven here with the shape just to make it yeah, I think that's a pretty cool design. I think all three of these are identical. Yep, identical and identical. Okay, so we got the power and they are a lot larger than the older units. Rightfully so, because they are more powerful. It is 100 to 240 volts. We got the plugs right here. Everything's good to go. It's a CAT6 cable, category six. And we got some instructions and we got another power port. So it's been about a week since I've unboxed this using as my main mesh system and it is phenomenal. It is the best mesh system I have tested to date. It is crazy good. I did do all the speed test range tests. We'll go over the, all those numbers. But real quick, I did want to do a size comparison between the other decos. I have the XC200 here, XC75 and X55. So the closest thing to its size is the XC200. Granted, this is still larger but we could see that ports wise this thing is insane even compared to the XC200 and then we have my favorite budget pick the XC75 which is a lot smaller so you could see just how big this thing is and then we have also even a more budget pick the X55 which is another good mesh system depending on what you're using it for now it's number time starting with the internet speed test and as you guys already know no matter how fast your mesh system is when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the router itself can even go that fast, which in my case this can, and I recently upgraded my internet speeds to five gigabits per second up and down, which is amazing with this mesh system. Now, looking at the numbers, when I'm hooked up via ethernet to a computer, I get those full speeds, no problem. Even on wireless backhaul, I did a video recently where I showed you guys even on wireless backhaul, I can get five down and three and a half up, which is crazy as long as the computer is connected to an ethernet port, even though this is on wireless backhaul. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Now looking at the Wi-Fi devices, there is a reduction in speed. However, they're still both crazy fast, especially the OnePlus 11 5G with its Wi-Fi 7 capability. To find out the true performance of this mesh system, I need to do a local speed test. So I basically get rid of my ISP in the public speed test server and I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the main one, which then goes to the server. And I've done a whole video on this, explaining it in great detail. Links below if you guys are interested. There is an increase in speed once again. I've never seen anything 
this fast on a mobile device. And Wi-Fi 6C is also no slouch. Granted, I have seen these Wi-Fi 6C speeds, similar speeds on other Wi-Fi 6C devices on local speed test. And wired backhaul was no different. Really hardly a drop. Pretty much very similar speeds in both cases. And that's because we have two 10 gig ports. So one of them coming in and then the other one going out to the other one. So that's that's really one of the best selling points of this mesh system is that you have two crazy fast 10 gig ports and then two very fast two and a half gig ports. So you can run a full wired backhaul from this thing. Now wireless backhaul, this thing also did very well. I've never seen speeds above gigabit on wireless backhaul. So this is the first time I've seen mobile devices go past gigabit on wireless backhaul. And again, I've done a video on this recently where I connected my Mac mini to this, but if you connect the computer to this, even though this is on wireless backhaul and you connect it to one of these ports, you can almost get max speeds out of that, which is, which is crazy. Now, range test is no exception. Crazy speeds at 20 feet away inside my place, at 50 feet, I'm outside, and I keep going farther and farther away. Now, what also surprised me of this is that at 250 feet on the Wi-Fi 7 device, I was still getting incredibly fast speeds and it went all the way to 350 feet. In fact, it could go a little bit more than 350 feet, but I ran out of space that I literally would have to go in a completely different direction. Now, since I have the other two connected, you could see that right here, it is connected via wired backhaul. You could see that with the pretty much reverse S right there. Otherwise, it would show you a Wi-Fi sign. Now, the third one is here, so it's saying like, hey, it's offline, so obviously. Now, I did an internet speed test, and I pretty much got five down, five up, which is what I would expect. And Wi-Fi settings is a shortcut to that, but you can also access that when you click on more. It shows you how many clients you have that are connected to your main network and your guest network. And I also have some TP-Link smart home devices, some light switches and stuff, which automatically show up. So I can control them from here as well, but I typically use the Casa app for that. Now, if I click on security, it usually finds a risk for me because typically I have a guest network enabled, so that's typically what it flags. It also shows you you can upgrade to Home Shield Pro, which gives you more protections, including more parental controls. Now, parental controls are included with this thing. You could basically select the devices that belong to your kid, and then you could block it, or you could set other restrictions. So if you click on this, you could select one or more devices, you could filter content. So all of this stuff is included. You could block websites, which is included, and you could set bedtime. But if you want additional features like weekdays and weekends and custom days, that you need Home Shield Pro. If you want more restricted, like YouTube restricted or safe search things like that, that's you need to subscribe to the Home Shield Pro for that. So that's just a general outline of that. Now, when you click on more, this is where you see the beef of where everything is. This is where your Wi-Fi settings are. Now you can have a separate 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz, a separate 6 gigahertz band, and a separate MLO networks. Now, MLO is that new multi-link operation that's new to Wi-Fi 7 that basically combines all three and the devices can connect to that and it kind of gives it the best possible signal it, it can for these. So especially if you have Wi-Fi 6C devices or Wi-Fi 7 devices, you probably want to connect to the MLO network because that's typically going to give you the best possible speeds. Now, if you do a dedicated backhaul, which I'll go over, you actually have to turn off the six gigahertz band and the MLO network because it's gonna use the six gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul. But this is the first time I've tested a deco where when I enabled the dedicated backhaul, which I'll show you guys momentarily, and it didn't improve the speeds. So just as a heads up, so I actually just left it off because there's no point to it. You can also create an Internet of Things network for your smart home devices and internet connection, you do QoS, network optimization, where it's just saying, it just says like, oh, I can optimize the network if you want. And really, and you could control the LEDs if you want them to be on or off, if you have a time, like if you want them to op, be off during bedtime or something like that, you can do that. And really advanced is where everything is. So if you wanna run this as an access point, you can, you could set it here. I don't know why uh, anyone would at this point in time because you typically want to make the best router 
your main network and this thing is pretty much better than most routers out right now but it does give you that option which which is good because better routers will come out in the future and maybe you would want to do that back uh, later on unless there are other reasons where you want to do that um, this is what I was talking about the dedicated backhaul so if you enable this you would have to turn off the other networks which I'm not going to do right now but I did do testing with that on and with that off and it was pretty much right around the same speeds so I just left that off so I could leave the other networks on. You can do VPN stuff if you want to add a VPN server or a VPN client. You can, you know, you do have some options there. USB sharing, you could connect the drive to that if you want to do that as well. And you could turn on fast roaming and beamforming. I played with that as well. Now sometimes when you turn these on and devices don't connect to it automatically, you pretty much have to reset that device and reconnect to it. But this is you know is it absolutely necessary probably not but uh, beamforming probably helps a little bit I did play with that and I did have that on during my uh, testing so just as a heads up so that's pretty much the you know the app in a nutshell and system you can update the deco and stuff like that so currently I'm on version 1.07 of the firmware right off the bat this thing is a beast I mean it is crazy fast crazy fast wired backhaul wireless backhaul range devices whatever just i mean this thing can handle it all i don't want to say handle it all but very close to handling it all anything for internet speeds of up to 10 gigs this thing is solid you have the crazy fast ports you have you could do a full LAN with this thing you have to two 10 gigs the two two and a half gigs it just i mean this thing is solid really the question becomes is it worth getting because if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit and you're planning on using wired or wireless backhaul and you want to save a few bucks, you could check out the XC75 because this thing at those speeds, because you're being capped a gigabit anyways, there's not going to be a huge difference between these. Yes, this will have more range. Yes, the wireless backhaul on this will be a little bit better, but you're kind of being capped to that. But anything in excess of that, I mean, this thing is just like, it's just going to fly. This It's going to leave this thing behind. So it really just comes down to what is your situation now if you plan on future proofing stuff like that then yeah definitely worth considering but in the us they do have this available at best buy and on amazon links down below if you guys are interested and smash that subscribe button let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below is it worth getting this way or why not and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one